Hello and welcome to The Stinger, a super fan's guide to the latest in Marvel, Star Wars, and much more in fandom. I'm Josh Gann, and joining me today, they've, uh, they've, it's it's a new year, but it's the same them. It's Trent Neely and Joseph Sneed. How are we doing, guys? You know, you got to remember to put that 24 on stuff now. That's always an adjustment, but uh, but happy to be here with you guys. Yeah, as someone who works in uh, document production for, for engineering, that 24 is it's going to sneak up on me sometimes because I have to date a lot of stuff. It's it's weird. This is like this is a time where the the number, the growing numbers used to feel cool and now I just feel old. Now yep. I'm like, "Oh my, it's 2024." Like it's it's we're farther along <clears throat> in actual real life than like the Marvel Cinematic Universe was 5 years ago when we were watching Endgame. Like mm-hmm. we've caught up past where the events of Endgame took place in real life. That's we're we're past that's weird. Uh, we're past WandaVision at this point. Yeah. Yeah. To see, like we're, this is weird. It's 2024. We're, we're, getting into, uh, we're getting into like Shang-Chi ch- uh territory. It, it's it's scary. It's scary stuff, man. Um as always, thank you for joining us today. Uh you can subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast and follow us on YouTube. And then follow us on Instagram and TikTok at the Stinger Pod. We're gonna have some we're gonna have some fun social content for you this year. So you want to be sure to subscribe to us on the social media channels. Um, hey, before we get started today, I just gotta I gotta start out with some with some real. We gotta start out real. Joseph and I are entering into a beef starting about twenty four hours from now. Uh, yeah. Big big game tomorrow. <laughs> Bears Packers. Packers season on the line. The Bears haven't beat the Packers since 2018. We were still Justin college. Justin Fields' Bears career may be on the line. His Bears career might be on the line. The future of the NFL is really could be shaped by this one game because you know we have the first pick. You know what? How are we feeling, Joseph? How are we feeling? I ain't worried. Good because I'm not either. I feel the tide shifting. I is the 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 vibes are strong in Hallis Hall right now. I I'm just telling you, get ready. You, this, you think uh, you think the Bears are going to do it after you know? I mean, we watched the the beat down the Packers put on the Vikings last week. So we're not the Vikings. We're not. We're we're different. We're a transformed team. Justin Fields is playing great. Yeah, the, Vi- the defense the is playing have, great. Uh, you're not the Vikings. The Vikings have actually had some good years the past ten years or <laughs> yeah. so. And we're about the the next decade is ours. It's it's the Chicago's taking over the North. It's our time. Yeah, C- Caleb Williams is coming. John Harbaugh's coming. No, Jim Harbaugh's coming. Not, yeah, it'll be great. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. You just wait. I just wanted to get it on record right now. I yeah, I, um, I did uh, call this. Well, by the time this goes up, the game is probably gonna have been played. Right. That's true. It will yeah. have. Yeah. That's so, that's true. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say it. I'm not worried. All right. Good. I don't want you. I don't want you to be. I'm excited because uh, the commander ter- season's I- over. I can just stir the pot in the group <laughs> chat tomorrow and just be like, I'm just talking to, trash. To be, to be quite honest with you, I'm absolutely terrified. <laughs> so uh, there we go. I knew it. There I, we I go. The in the he eye. could fold. Cause, he folded. Because you know, last year the Packers were in the exact same position. Exactly. Not, not, the, not the Bears, but against the Lions. Against the Lions. Hey, if you win, you get in. If you lose, the Seahawks are in. And oh, look, this year, if the Packers win, they're in. If they lose, the Seahawks are in. Um, and the Bears it, have nothing to play for other than to break this streak. Ruining, well, that's that's what the Lions had last year, too. They exactly. had nothing to do except ruin <laughs> the Packers' year. Exactly. Now the but, Lions are just going to be going after the refs next year. That's all of those. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. The, the, the one thing, though, is how does the rest of the North feel about the show that Jordan Love has been putting on this year? Hey. He's been balling. I can't listen. I can't. I can't knock him, dude. Is uh, I'm still not. I'm still not like gonna say y'all have a third Hall of Fame quarterback. I'm not is, saying that. I'm not saying he that. He is very either. good. He is very good. Going going into the season, I said I don't really care what happens. I want answers at quarterback, and he played pretty good. I think you got. So him. I'm like, we're good. I'm not worried about it. I mean, I would like to get to the playoffs, even though we're about to get run out of AT and T Stadium next week if we make the playoffs. <laughs> But it's that it's that playoff um, playoff experience. That yeah. You need. Well, you may not get that. Uh, Trent, who who the Commanders pick at number two overall? 
Oh my gosh! I actually, mean, actually, would you like to trade up to the number one pick? Maybe, maybe depends. give us one of your future firsts. I don't know. D- maybe d- depends. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to pull the, another RG three draft maneuver, like because that just destroyed the team for years. Well, you know, they could just do like the Bears did and spend their number two pick at quarterback on UNC quarterback Drake May, right? I'm they sure could. that'd work out. He'll be yeah. better than Trubisky. He'll be better than Trubisky. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're looking at Sam Howell and. <laughs> But, it is true. Sam Howell. And then well, there's all of us that are, you know, Virginia Tech fans that are like, yeah, we have a quarterback that's not horrible now. Yeah, honestly. And yes. he's coming and he's coming back. Yes, I, it's a beautiful like, thing. I was elated when we won our bowl game, but I was even more excited when the ESPN announcers were like, and I talked to Coach Pry and he said that like he's gotten commitments from like twelve players to stay next <laughs> year. And I was like, Oh, the transport portal isn't murdering us this year. Like, what a beautiful cow. thing. What a beautiful I, thing. Yeah, like, move me to tears. Off season, Florida State will pay half a billion dollars and the ACC will fall apart. Yep. Yep. That, that's what will happen. Well, thanks for listening to Football Corner, everyone. I about to say, um, that was our little... <laughs> for, for, all the, for the Venn diagram of football and film, there you go. That's it. This is the sweet spot. Follow us at thestinger.com. <laughs> um, all right. It's a new year. It's 2024. And today... We are going to be drafting our favorite, most exciting things that we are kind of putting stock in for the year 2024. It's it's a weird year where like the writer's strike wiped out a bunch of things and delayed a bunch of things to 2025, but there's still some things coming out. And so there, it, it's really going to vary a ton today from like major blockbuster that has been on the schedule for a long time to wait what's that can you explain to me what this is it's going to be all over the place today now last year we got to do our categories and everything this year we are just drafting straight up because it is it is like a mixed trick-or-treat basket of random goodies that we're getting in 2024 um but first we're gonna start like many people do and we're going to give some New Year's resolutions for the fandom genre as a whole. So we look out across the board. We're looking at Star Wars. We're looking at Marvel. We're looking at DC. <clears throat> 2023 was, uh, you know, it had some highs and it had lots of lows, too. So I think there's it's a self-assessment time. We're fans of this stuff. We watch almost everything. So, like, we know that they could be doing some of these things a lot better. Uh, So we each came with one New Year's resolution we have for something in in fandom entertainment. Uh, Trent, I'm going to, I'm going to kick things over to you. Do you have a New Year's resolution for us? You know, I just, I just want like the, these fandom studios to realize that like things can stand on their own again. You know, Mm. I feel, I feel like the, if I had to say the (laughs) macro problem with where Marvel and DC and everything's at, it's like, they're all just building to the next event. Everything's like, we got to create the next end game. We got to create the next Thanos. And it's just like, remember how little like the MCU actually set up Thanos guys. Like he was on screen for yeah. a total of like two minutes before infinity war and like infinity war still rocked. Like this idea that we have to set it up to get the audience to invest, I think is such a fallacy. So I'm just like, nah, just, just make good stories. Like I, I don't care if it's not part of some ongoing narrative, just, just like make cool, fun, interesting stuff um yep so, so yeah that's my my that's my resolution just 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 have fun with it you know just make what's some like good what's like an example of that like something that stands on its own i'm trying to think of the last time i mean shang chi i think is actually a pretty mm. good the last time like marvel made something that was like hey we're not doing an origin story but we're like you didn't have to see end game that we like teased the like the mandarin in the background of this like this is just when Wu and these rings show up now And like this story totally wraps up on its own and doesn't end on a huge cliffhanger for like the Kang dynasty. It's just like, that's the last thing I felt like that truly Marvel made that they were content in what they made. That's a good example. Actually. I didn't think because I, because there's always going to be a post-credit scene or something, but right. And there is that little thing with like Captain Marvel and Wong recruiting them at the very end. But like, it's not that's so small. It's so small. Yeah. I guess I'll give my uh, my resolution right now, and mine yeah. is time. Ooh. Just, just spend more time on stuff. If we look at what's going on last year, 
a lot of it was, just felt like it was put together really shoddily. Yes. Like yes. the writing overall last year was not very good. The movies themselves didn't look very good. And the TV shows, I mean, I think we only have to look at the uh, CGI crap fest at the end of Secret Invasion. And and even that one has poor writing too. But, you know, we look at um, something that I haven't seen but know about of The Flash of like, yeah, I heard that movie look like garbage. Yep. <laughs> Intentionally. But still... Um, yeah, I think they just need to spend more time in the writer's room. <clears throat> give these poor VFX artists more time <laughs> yep. to make a good looking movie. Yep. Um, and I think that'll solve a lot of their problems. Yep. Yeah, I think th- it's going to be interesting coming out of the writer's strike, I think, because so much is apparent now that these companies release streaming platforms for the first time and had nothing to put on it. So mm-hmm. they rapidly made as much genre fandom content as they could. Mm-hmm. And now Warner Brothers is selling stuff to Netflix and Disney's consolidating Hulu and Disney Plus. So like I would be curious to see in a year from now the projects that we're talking about like are we going to is it going to be is it going to be different like what we're anticipating like oh we actually know there's each into each like uh media conglomerate is focusing on less i mm-hmm. i think that i think that's a real possibility yep yeah 100 percent. so i have two resolutions and they're both for star wars uh we haven't talked about star wars in this conversation yet one use the volume less i just great, that would be my pick. first biggest thing yeah. is like Sometimes you need the volume. Sometimes you need it to create a landscape that you just could not recreate in the real world. And then sometimes you could actually just go to a field and shoot what's around you. Um, there's just a couple instances in both Ahsoka and in The Mandalorian last year where I'm like, I don't understand why you needed this. Like you're in a forest. Just shoot, just shoot a forest. Like go somewhere. And bring your cameras and stuff. You don't need to recreate it in a virtual environment. The second one would be, this is a little bit broader. Um, I think Dave Filoni, as the creative head now of of Lucasfilms and Star Wars, I'm begging you to rethink how you're going to tell this story of the Mandoverse. Mm. I really... I thought a lot about this and I really don't like the way that they are essentially like copying the Marvel model of different characters have their own show and movie. And then all of a sudden they're going to collide for a crossover event. I, I felt like this last year was the first year where we saw like the Mandalorian is his own main character with his own show. And Ahsoka is her own main character of her own show. So we need them to have their own shows, but we need to tell this overarching story. And the overarching story subtracted both of them somehow from their own show. And I'm just like, I think I, my suggestion, keep keep Mando, let, let Mando and Grogu go off and do Mando and Grogu things in The Mandalorian. But then I, I think instead of doing Ahsoka Season 2 and Skeleton Crew and Book of Boba Fett, I think make one TV show. I think make one TV show, call it Heir to the Empire, and include all of these characters in your overall narrative because I think there's just less chance of like filler if you yeah. just if you just make one concise storyline. So I yeah. thought I thought about this one. I'm like, I, I think that could work better. I don't know. What do y'all and, think? Yeah, um, I mean I th- yeah, I mean there 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 is just I mean, let's let's be real. If you're if you're reading between the lines of what Disney like business suits are saying like yeah. they they know they made too much content yeah they're, they can't like say we messed up because that's just not how the world works but like they're they're saying it without saying it so so they know it's a problem um yeah i mean i i keep going back and forth whether i even want an ahsoka season two because yeah. i'm like because i'm like i think the story the the only reason i think that narratively exists to have a second season is wrapping up or continuing like the Balin thing yep 
that yep. that would be weird to just shoehorn into a movie. Otherwise, I'm like, this is ready to go just for the the Thrawn confrontation. Yep. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think Sabine and Ahsoka need to grow or change substantially enough to justify a second season. Um, you know, I'm I'm excited for the Acolyte because that's just like a totally different time period of Star Wars. But but that that's sort of the only things that I want now of TV. I'm like, leave this whole. 60 year star skywalker era but like yes. like yeah. like we have nine movies about this like we're, yep. we're good like yep. and so and like so, 120 episodes of the clone wars right, right like right. It's, it's like this has been this has been extensively covered like yep. and and so yeah just less is more i i, I want to see I, you know the thrawn thing i actually am excited for a big thrawn confrontation because thrawn is just cool but beyond that i'm just like nah go go way into the future or way into the past yes, yes. And, and a lot less yeah, Josh, I think what they could do on your idea is they, they could make the movie, because I'm like 100% sure the movie is going to be called Heir to the Empire. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I think sure. they bring back a dead title and do Rangers of the New Republic. Ooh, Ooh I like and that. And just do that as the show. Mm-hmm. And I think what you what you could almost do in that is make that the show The Mandalorian shows up in because he's yes. like a bounty hunter for hire almost exactly. working with, with like Carson Tava. He's a contractor for the, for the Republic. Yeah, so I think that would be how you tie the Mandalorian in. And then you have your Ahsoka series be like this weird existential force yeah. adventure. Yeah. And yep. then those be the only two shows that yep. come, that come in. Yep. Yeah. You are just focusing on, on less. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's more, it's more focused. Cause, because if you do Rangers of the New Republic, then you can have all of your stuff you had from Ahsoka with like, oh, Hera's in a um, hearing. Yeah. And Mon Mothma's navigating the Senate and they're trying to do this military stuff. And then the Mandalorian shows up. They're like, hey, we f- we think we've got a lead on yeah. this Moth thing. Can you come help us out? I think that would be the way to do it. That's a great idea because I think they only canceled that show because of the Gina Carano thing. And like, yep. there's still a story to tell there, like, especially with the mm-hmm. rebels characters. Like you can yep. use Hera, you can use Ezra now as he's over there. Like just go, we can see chopper commit some, some actual chopper. war crimes with the answer is always more chopper. Like mm-hmm. I just, I just think, yeah, it's right there. Show, show me chopper. Show me Zeb who was weird. Yes. absent in Ahsoka, despite Mandalorian teeing him up. And right, I was, right. Like, I, I know I complain about like fan expectations dictating what people want to see from stories, but that was one case where I was like, Oh, I'm so ready. And then he didn't even show up. And well, I they was gave like, it to us. And it's not like that wasn't out of nowhere. They legit showed us him in the Mandalorian. Yeah. They're they, like, gave Jason, they gave us Jason Sandula and his like weird green hair. <laughs> exactly. Like show us Zeb. Come on, y'all. All right, so those are our resolutions. Feeling like feeling like we made some goals for twenty twenty four. We're feeling we're feeling optimistic today. Um, we may not actually be feeling optimistic. I don't know. Are you guys excited about the stuff on this list for twenty twenty four? It's it's mixed. Like yes, yeah. hopeful. Hope I would say more hopeful than hopeful. excited. Okay. Like there's stuff that I'm like, oh, that looks interesting, and I hope it's good. But I, but I was so I've been not burned. That sounds over dramatic. But like <laughs> the last two years have been interesting in yeah. the fandom space. That I'm like I don't I don't know I don't get as as jazzed as as I once did. Yeah, yeah. There's probably not just on my draft board that I've got, but of the list we made, there's like three or four things that I'm genuinely excited for. But the rest, I'm kind of like Trent, like eh, maybe. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't actively root for anything to be bad. I think that's a weird thing that's happened with yes. like some oh, moviegoers yeah. is that yes. some people are like rooting for things to fail, and I'm like, guys, people are like, this is their jobs and they're working hard. Like, just you know. check, oh, the yeah. com- check the comment section of any like IGN post or any like Hollywood Reporter post, and it is just people begging for stuff to be bad. And I don't, yeah, I, I, it's weird. Get up, just get on YouTube and type IGN Captain Marvel. Yes. Mm. Like I, I've heard things about that movie. Like it sounds weird, but like the idea of people being like, "Yes!" Like I'm so happy that this. I, yeah, it's just such a bizarre thing to me. Well, and then as we get closer to probably the the acolyte and uh, the new Jedi Order stuff, I'm sure that'll be ramping back up again too. Yeah. Oh yeah, people are already talking about 
the the like the Ray movie news that came out like I think two days ago. With the um, what the director said? Yeah. Yeah. Where it's she just, was just like she was like, Yeah, we want to make something exciting that people like. like this is gonna be awful. Yeah, and it's just like, yeah. okay. Like, like, this is the safest thing you can say. Like, no, we're actively going to make a movie that you hate. She's just like, Yeah, we want to make something really special. Yeah. And she's also said like it's about time there was a woman creating and shaping these stories. And I think, like, is this the first time Star Wars has had a woman director? Like, oh, I guess they had Obi-Wan. Um, yeah, they had yeah, Obi-Wan. Deb- and then... Um, but for a movie, but, this would be the first time, right? Yes. Yeah, because they've got Leslie Headland Hedlund for um, for the Acolyte. That's right. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and we had, there was Deborah Chow for Obi-Wan. Yep. I think Bryce Dallas Howard has had some hand in the Mandalorian, yes. but that might have just been directing. Yeah, yeah like I, I, I think she's sort of like an unofficial executive producer because I know it's like Rick. Um, I don't know how to say his last name. Like Femi, Femi, Femi Yuwa. Yeah, Femi yeah. Yuwa. Yeah, like I know he got promoted to like a co-executive producer, yes. and then I think Bryce <laughs> is like she's not officially that, but she's part of that sort of tight knit group of yeah. like she comes back for at least one episode now every se- Manda season. Yeah. Either way, I mean, like that's. That's a that's a big thing. That's a big achievement for the franchise and people are going to hate. So, um, all right, let's get into the draft. We got to we got to to in order to draft, we have to select our order first. So I've got a random draft order generator open. We're going to randomize this baby and see what it gives us. First pick goes to me. Oh, second pick goes to Joseph. Third pick goes to Trent. Mm. Um. Now I know what you're all gonna say. This is biased because Josh is the one running it. He could Rigged. easily be lying. <laughs> Stop the count. <laughs> I have a. I actually have a question before we start. I should have asked you this before we recorded, but we'll we'll debate it right here live. What do we think about stuff that you drafted last year that you thought was supposed to come out last year, but is instead coming out this year? Is like, that stuff on the table? I mean, there there are two things, or at least one, but I think two that that are, that are on our list that were supposed to come out last year. I think yes. So so I'm saying they're eligible. Um, they're re, also, they're re-entering the draft pool. I would also say they're eligible, unless one of you guys takes my pick, then it's not eligible. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm I, I think, I'm a little I, yeah, concerned I'd, of the waters we're treading into. Yeah, I'd say anything that got pushed to this year. From last year is open season. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's how that's how the draft works, baby. I you asked. Know, I there, asked. There, there are these college prospects that you think they're going to declare for the NFL draft, and then they're like, actually, I'm doing one more year of college. So, <laughs> so this is what happens. That's true. That's a great point. I'm I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad you put it that way. Um. All right. Well, I have the first pick. I'm up, and that means I get to go first. And guys, um. I don't know. Kill me, shoot me down. I'm picking <laughs> Dune Part Two with my first pick. It had to be. You can't pick. Uh, you can't pick stuff from last year. <laughs> yeah, guys. I mean, this one's obvious. I think it's self-explanatory. This is the event for 2024, right? Yes. Like, I I am now reading the book very slowly, but it's starting to pick up. I'm starting to I'm starting to like get into it. There's more like inner like character conflict happening which i like um the first movie i gotta be honest i did not understand um and i haven't rewatched it i hope to rewatch it in the coming months but it was visually beautiful and it was just an, an enthralling world to spend some time in and so what i know about this book from what i'm reading what i know about it from hearing joseph gush about it i and then looking at the cast you look at the cast of this movie obviously obviously timothy chalamet is coming back but then uh we're gonna get zendaya in the movie for real this time not just as like a a post-credit scene she was basically the luke skywalker in force awakens of of dune part one she she was but then uh we are also getting austin butler entering the fold we're also getting flo pew entering the fold i mean this is like the biggest young names in Hollywood for the past two years are in this film. Yeah. And I am super excited about that. 
Yeah, Say sure. Christopher Walken That's is right. the emperor Walken. of yeah. the world or whatever. Leah, yeah. Leah, say Sadu. Yeah, Leah Sadu. Yeah. I am. I am just like there. And then uh, Denis Villeneuve uh, directing it. Like I, I, I trust him. You know what I mean? Like it, I, I have so much confidence that this is going to be a good movie. Yeah. And and Denis just just I I saw a tweet literally like two hours ago that he's like yeah Dune Messiah is either gonna be my next project or my my second to next project. Oh, <laughs> yeah. all right, okay, this is legit. Okay, this is legit. What do you do? Y'all have Dune thoughts before I move on? Um, yeah, I'm I'm sort of like you, Josh. Like, r- did not read the book. Hope hoping to start reading it before the, this new one comes out. We'll see. Um, real really enjoyed it. You know, it, it's weird because. See, seeing Dune after watching Star Wars when I was a kid is like, oh, this reminds me of Star Wars. But then you yeah. remember like the book came out first. So it's like, oh, this is what like inspired Star Wars. And so it's weird to sort of chicken yes. and egg that your your brain on that. Yep. yep. Um, but but no, I thought it was great. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, I think this is just a really talented performer. Um, so I'm very excited to see what he does. Yeah. Um, he rides a, a sandworm using a, like a Sonos speaker. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um. What else? That's Austin great. Butler's yelling and is bald. Like, sure, here for it. Like the the anti Elvis, you know. So uh, <laughs> the anti Elvis. Uh, well, no, I and, mean, you know, not to spoil Hans it Zimmer. too much. Hans but... Zimmer, the goats cooking again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Austin Butler in the movie might be the anti Paul. So. Ooh. Oh, I like it. I like it. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, Josh. Yeah. Also, Rebecca Ferguson. I forgot Mission Impossible. Oh, so, you know, course. I got to ride yeah. or die for my Mission oh, yeah. Impossible people. She's great. All right. So like that was the obvious choice. Yes. You knew it was going to go number one. Joseph, you're up on the board next. Uh, I it, it pains me to make you pick immediately after I pick Dune, but also all's fair. Uh, you go for yeah. it, buddy. Yeah, that was at the top of my list. And then you probably have a bunch of spaces after that. <laughs> Let's see. What do we want from the list? I will take Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. You know what wow. I mean? Oh my gosh. Interesting. I thought, I thought the first trailer looked really fun. And the first three movies are just great. So I'm I'm hoping this continues the strategy. I think those are an underrated that's an underrated trilogy of the twenty tens, I think is what I think the first one was two thousand eleven. I think so. But it kind of came out every few years. I think it's one of the underrated trilogies of the twenty tens. Um yeah, I really enjoyed it and looked forward to it. I don't really have too many other reasons why other than I like the first three <laughs> movies because I haven't seen the old original Planet of the Apes. I don't really care about them that much, but I just think this one looks really good. Yeah. No, I agree. I think I think sort of the overall lack of fan expectation yeah. is what makes this such a unique movie in the like in the franchise landscape is it's not like people have read all the books and even though mm-hmm. yeah the original movies are out there and I've heard that this one's going to get closer to like the sort of universe of what those original movies are that they've they've addressed they're like this is not a remake of the like we're not going to get to that thing of like we're remaking the original like it's so so yeah I think it's at a cool spot um it was definitely it was definitely high up on my draft board so got to do some recalibrating <laughs> yeah that's interesting. I I didn't expect it to go that high. I'll be honest, but it is like I mean that this is the year that we're in, where basically like you choose what you're you choose what you're excited about. Basically, it's yeah. kind of it's kind of how this goes. But I think the the ceiling for this is really high because of yeah you can. It's funny how like we look at we get it so excited for like a new Star Wars show, and then when you look past at the prior projects, you're like wait they haven't all been that great so why are you excited and for this one it's like everything's been great so let's just buckle up and enjoy it again you know what i mean so that's yeah cool. trent you're up next buddy yeah i think uh i'm, I'm gonna go with deadpool 3 all right here. all right i was waiting for it i was waiting you know, for it you know we, we've all said the the world has all said that the marvel universe is in an interesting spot um <laughs> <laughs> to say the least but um, if there if there's one thing we know people like is Ryan Reynolds is pretty pretty yep. beloved and and not just superhero culture but in general he's arguably one of the few like modern celebrities that people know by name like my parents know who Ryan Reynolds yep. is yep um and and Hugh Jackman as Wolverine like yep. and you know 
there's a lot of debate with people in Marvel movies when you say like, oh, they did, you know, a spy movie for Winter Soldier. Did they actually? And, you know, all uh, how much of the genre things have they actually done? I am so excited by the possibility that this is just going to be a buddy comedy through the multiverse. I think it might be, yeah. And and the fact that Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds already have such a rapport on social media before they even made this movie together, I think is just going to be so fun. And the the leaks that we've gotten from the set of that this seems to actually be the movie that people were hyping up Multiverse of Madness as. Ooh, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I think it'll be a, a fun, bonkers time. And now that Due to recent events in the news, this this could be the last uh, movie about the multiverse. They can kind of do whatever they want. Maybe um, it's possible. So so yeah, I'm I'm actually really looking forward to this one. I think I think even if there's going to be issues with the narrative, I just doubt that I'm not going to have a good time with exactly Ethan and Ryan doing bonkers stuff. So I think it's very possible the narrative is like completely wacky. Yeah, but the point, like I feel like you said, this is like what we should have got in Multiverse of Madness. The difference is like this is they can just have fun with it you know like we're not relying there we might see all of the former heroes of fox 20th century fox's past and it's not meant to be anything other than for the vibes and for the fun of it and we know that going into it we're not expecting this movie to like reshape the marvel universe you know what i mean right i i've only heard like rumors of it so i don't know if it's true or not I would love to see James Marston in like the classic Cyclops uniform. I know. I keep, yeah. I keep hearing rumors about it, and now that they've like had the whole lockdown on the rumors, I doubt we'll we'll get. Oh, that we won't know thing. anything until this, this comes out. I think this could also be the movie where we get the Channing Tatum Gambit. That <laughs> that, that been, would be that had incredible. been promised for oh, years and years. That would be awesome. That would be so Gambit, awesome. Gambit and Cyclops are my favorite X Men. So. I just want to I got to watch the X-Men movies before this comes out. Eh, you don't have to watch all of them. <laughs> no, you can you can cherry pick. What should I watch though? I would say the first two and then First Class are like the only okay. ones that are I Those think are Days of Future from. Past is kind of important. Oh yeah, that that's actually fair. Okay. All and right. uh obviously Logan. I bet, uh, yeah, like I have lo- seen Logan. That's that, okay. that I will say I have seen Logan. But I yeah, will so, put the I'll put yeah, those the, on my the watch first, list. The first two, First Class, Days of Future Past. You're probably fine after that. And then the, the two Deadpool movies. Yeah. Oh, right. True. Um, Trent, you are up again. That's right. We're Snake in here. Snake. And Slither I'm going to go Snake. with uh, a show that by the time that this comes out, it'll already be out in the world. I'm going to go with Echo here. Wow. Really? Really? Yeah, I'm 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 super pumped for Echo. I'll be honest. Um, okay. Very very intriguing character they created in Hawkeye that we we got a nice little tease of, and then like you heard they were doing a series, and when it, that was announced, everybody was like, oh, they're just putting stuff to fill up Disney Plus, and then the trailer dropped a couple months ago, and it's like that this looks this looks good, like a proper street level dark angsty thing. Vincent D'Onofrio clearly is relishing being back as Kingpin. We got a brief. We got glimpses of Charlie Cox in the classic Daredevil suit. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I just, I just like a good cr- gritty crime thing. What can I say? And so, I, so I think Echo is going to be a really fun ride. Um, and I think they're going to do some really cool stuff with like Native American history and mythology. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's just going to be something really unique. I think it will be. It's also important to note this is the first uh thing under the marvel spotlight banner which is like a yes. new project for them that is focuses on a grounded story this is not it is not meant to push the like overall multiverse narrative forward it is meant to exist solely as its like own grounded events which and i, I think, really like that idea a lot i think they could almost retcon werewolf by night and moon Knight into it yeah 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 they totally could they absolutely could there's also I don't know if y'all have seen r- the rumors that like they're gonna build up the like basically New York City street scene in the MCU mm-hmm. and it, yeah it's gonna, I saw like, that culminate in Spider Man Four essentially yeah I l- I really like that idea I think that would be yeah. super cool I do but also like it's sort of what I was talking about with my resolutions thing where it's like again yeah. they're like we got we got to build it to like an Avengers level thing but like on the streets and with Spider and I'm like but do you though like yeah like if they do if they do it right obviously it'll be good but i just just to like do it to have an event i think i don't know yeah it's fair i i just think it 
Kingpin as a Spider-Man villain would be so yes. cool to see. No, I mean, let Vincent D'Onofrio play that character literally until like the sun explodes. Seriously, like, yeah. like he loves it too. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. Like he gave an interview recently where he was like, "Yeah, Charlie like Cox have kind of lost hope at this point," but he was like, "I was certain that like one yeah. day, like Kevin yeah. Feige and Marvel would call us and like we would we would get to do it again." And I was he right. was right. Like, he was right. All right, Joseph, you're back up. All right, I am going to take a movie. This franchise has not had a movie come out since 2014. And they have had one TV show. Since okay. Then. I am going to go with The Lord of the Rings, The War of the Row here. Oh! Mm. All yep. right. I can't say it's, I should have expected anything different from you. I was wondering uh, if that was going to come off the board. It, it is strange that it's... I mean, they have to call it Lord of the Rings for a reason, but there is going to be literally nothing in this story that has to do with the rings. Uh, but I feel like just the brand recognition, I'd almost say Middle Earth War of the Rohirrim would be a better title. Mm. But it's a it's a Lord of the Rings movie with like Brian Cox playing Helm Hammerhand, uh, Rohan Guy. Uh, Miranda Otto's coming back to do like the voiceover is AON. If we can hear that sweet, sweet Rohan music again, yeah. I will be over the moon. Let's go. So, yeah, I'm going to take the Lord of the Rings project from this year. And it's oh, like, like it. it's supposed to be anime, right? Yeah. Am I correct so, in saying that? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, anime violence hits differently. It does. It does. That it does. Yeah. No, I, um, I, this was on my board. I will say this was definitely on my board. I don't. I think probably not as high just because I don't have as familiar of a feeling of that time and the mm-hmm. lore. But not a look. I have on. loved what Star Wars Visions has done with the Star Wars universe. So if I, this can feel anything like that, I'll be very excited. I do have to admit, I still have not watched any of Visions. I feel like give give like one episode a try before because like it's, I. It's just I, I just keep I keep forgetting about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it, fair. It, it hasn't been as hey, strong a uh, marketing push no. as the other Disney Plus content. There's a million things to watch. So yeah. All right, that brings it back to me. And man, this is tough. I okay. First, first, I get my first pick out of the way because I know know where I'm going here. My next pick, I am going Star Wars: The Acolyte. Hmm. I feel very, very excited about this because, um, listen, sometimes these Star Wars narratives don't always work out. But you know what I'm going to love most of the time? I'm going to love a good lightsaber duel. Mm -hmm. And the way they're talking about the duels and the action in this show sounds like it is like on crack. Like they just like, ratcheted this thing up past 10 and it was like just go crazy like go i like i it would be awesome if this show introduces like a new type of lightsaber duel or like does something kind of similar to what we saw in the prequel era um and this show is going to take place in the high republic era so this is you know uncharted territory joseph i know that excites you the high republic era so yeah, and it's it's going to be set towards the end of the high republic is what they're talking about so the High Republic is like, I think they've said the era of the High Republic ends like 50 or so years before the Phantom Menace. I think this will be before that. Yep. <laughs> kind of where the High Republic is right now is around 250 years before the Phantom Menace. And it's a good time. <laughs> it's a good time yeah i i'm i'm excited i'm excited train you have any feelings on this yeah no i'm i'm th- this is one case where i think catering to fan expectations might be a good thing because like so many people have said with the past couple star wars things it's like man there's not been enough lightsabers and like it's like disney's like all right fine like we'll, we'll fix that like we'll just go ham on some action for you yeah all. yeah um, yeah, and uh, Daphne Keene from Logan is going to be in that coin, I mm-hmm. think. And I thought she was really like a great find uh, new talent in Logan. So I'm excited to see her get another shot at a big IP thing. Um, and I think the rest of the cast, I don't remember anybody specifically, but I remember reading it a while ago and being like, oh, I like you. I like you. You yep. like 
So, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this one for sure. Yeah. I think it's going to be good. All right. My next pick, I might surprise y'all a little bit here. I was toying back and forth, but I'm going to do it. And I'll preface by saying I have not seen the first iteration of this. Okay. So that will be something I do in the new year. Probably. Um, I am picking Joker fully. <laughs> adu, ah, or however you pronounce it. Yeah. I, I think that's close enough. Sorry I, to I the did, French. I, I took French in high school, but you know, clearly it wore off on me. I just think this movie could be so weird. Yes. And I like that. I like when we take the fandom genre and decide to go, you know what would be, you know, something that's never <laughs> been done before. We're going to do something that's never been done before here. We're basically getting a Joker Harley Quinn musical romance with mm-hmm. Lady Gaga and Yaquin Phoenix. Like it might be corny. But it also might be really, really good. And I just feel like I have to take a swing at it. Because I think the potential is like, oh my gosh, this was amazing. And if there's any- a- there's also potential it sucks. But yeah, go ahead, Joseph. If it's anything like the first movie, there are going to be scenes that are just so uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we might have to do like a deeper dive at a later date. Like the original Joker is a movie that I have such complex feelings about. Like, I think the way, like the cinematography, the score, all the technical stuff is like some of the most stellar filmmaking I've seen. I also have like kind of major issues with like the script, like not just like, like the it's controversial. I just like how much, how smart, like some of the movie thinks it is. I I have questions about. Interesting. Um, Um, but I will say there were there were so many people at the, like after the first one came out and they announced a sequel pretty quickly that like they were like oh it's gonna be more about like the decay of society and like this thing and that like the fact that like so many people are gonna be turned off that it's a musical with Lady Gaga like yeah. kind of makes me more excited than I was when this was first mm-hmm. announced. I was like okay. oh well if you're gonna deliberately go sort of against what people want and expect yeah. yep. and just like kind of what I was talking about just make a standalone thing that just is its own yes. thing. Yes. Whether it works or not, I I do think it's fascinating. So I, I, a, I'm very curious about this. They could have a time jump with like a singing Batman. Yes. That would be <laughs> incredible. <laughs> that would be bring, awesome. Bring back George Clooney as Batman, but give oh, him a musical number. Imagine? Mm. Oh my gosh, that would be so great. That's what that's what I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for chaos in this movie. So it seems like we might get it. it. It seems yeah. like we might get it. All right, Joseph, you're back up. All right. This is a movie that's coming from a beloved studio that is not on as hot of a streak as they once were, but it's a sequel. And I think the first one is their best work of maybe the last 15 years. Mm. Mm. I know. I know what this is. I'm going inside out too. Yeah. Let's go. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I loved inside out so much. It was just like this weird emotion movie that you kind of understand because it's about growing up. And now this one being about teenagehood, I think it could be really special. The only thing I feel like Inside Out did that was a disservice to Pixar was they went overboard with like the little emotional blob type characters and started mm-hmm. doing that in like all of their movies. Like you had Elemental and Soul, yep. and, which I actually enjoyed Soul. And probably, I don't know if it's controversial or not. I enjoyed the real life versions of Soul much more than yep. the, the the Soul parts of Soul, I guess. Because I thought the the main character was just like, he was so relatable. He was like a regular guy that was just chasing his dreams. And I thought yep. that was much more a much better movie than like the the other parts of it but inside out i think it works because you're looking into like a kid's mind and they have the little scenes where you look at like the parents mind and the dad's emotions are all like sitting on a couch <laughs> yep. and uh so i thought it was really funny but really well done so i'm looking forward to seeing what they do in inside out too because they had the the trailer where anxiety shows up, and I was like, "Oh wow, this is where they're going with this movie." Yeah, I'm kind of really interested to see where we're going. No, because like they're doing, they're not just—it's not just new emotions. It's like 
sort of abstract things of like anxiety. I think ennui is like one of the new things that shows up, and I'm like, how are they going to show ennui for like the kids can understand that? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you. I think the first Inside Out's like a masterpiece, like uh, genuinely. Um, mm-hmm. Like I remember, I because like at, I figured out my sophomore or junior year at Tech that you could like rent DVDs from Newman Library for like five days. Yeah, and yeah. so I just like grabbed stuff I'd never seen before. And would watch it like in my dorm room, like sporadically on weekends. And so I watched like Inside Out and like sobbed by the end. Like the ending <laughs> of Inside Out just like destroyed me. Um, no, it, it's so good. Um, I, I, it, it's so good that like the only reason I'm nervous about the sequel is I'm like it can't it can't be as good. Yeah. Like I yeah. oh my god I think this, yeah. just this is just my personal I think Inside Out is one of the best things Pixar's ever put out. It, it's my it's it's my favorite one. All right, so I yeah. have a this this came to me as you guys are talking about it. I'm gonna play y'all. Have y'all seen like the start bench cut format on social media before? Yeah, I have not. It's so basically like you. I'm gonna give you three things. You have mm-hmm. to either start like okay. like if you if they were on your roster, you're starting benching and cutting something from the team. Okay. So, inside out, Coco, Soul, start bench cut. Okay, I'm starting inside out. Benching soul and cutting Coco, I guess. Yeah. Whoa. Interesting. I have not seen Coco. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. All right. That's so, your, uh, that's your so, homework, Joseph. Yeah. So, I'll, so I'll, I mean, I'll start inside out and uh, bench soul and cut Coco just because Coco is unproven commodity to me. Soul, I know I'm getting like, a good movie. You're getting solid with, minutes. With some stuff that I was like, eh, I don't know about. But yeah, inside this would that would have been tougher if you said um Inside Out, Toy Story, and The Incredibles. Oh. Oh. That would have well, that's... Been, that would have been tough. Yeah, there, there there's a couple configurations that I'm like that it becomes an unanswerable question. Yeah. Well like, that's how like, I feel that's how I feel about this one. This I'm thinking of like the new age Pixar. I feel like yeah, inside yeah, out yeah. is the the first Inside Out in, is like the the crown jewel of modern Pixar. Yes, one hundred percent. But Co- I would start Coco. I'm just gonna say C- Coco. I I for those who said I entered that way too quickly, I really like Coco a lot. <laughs> I I just think that a lot of the impact comes from the big scene that yeah. I won't spoil for Joseph here. Um, whereas whereas for me, just for me personally, Inside Out and Soul, like the plots as a whole stick out more. Whereas Coco, I just f- think about that one scene. Yeah, Coco Coco's incredible though. You no, it's, have, it, you, and you it, have to it, go watch it, it, Joseph. It's one of the most gorgeously, I will say, animated. Like visuals was, alone, it's so good. What was the yeah. the we don't talk about Bruno movie? That's in Encanto. Encanto. Yeah. Okay, was yeah. that Pixar or Disney? It's Disney. Disney. It's Disney. I haven't, animation. I haven't seen that one either. Um, it's good. Yeah, but, it's good. It's all that's, that's what, also it's one of my one. nephew's favorites. <laughs> Oh, I, I bet. To, I oh look. my gosh, he probably sings that song nonstop. Yeah, he 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 loves the music. That's yeah, so I need to I need to make a list of the Disney and Pixar movies of the past few years that I haven't seen because, you know, have you guys seen Luca yet? I was about I to have. say it. I have Lu- seen Luca. Luca's Lu- Luca, also Lu- incredible. Luca stealth pick for like yeah the modern Pixar. It's a, it's yeah. a different vibe for Pixar, but that's kind of why I love it. I love I was, that so much. I I liked Luca. I didn't get like really big on it but i enjoyed it it was sure. i got emotional fun. towards the end of that movie man like the when the, the train station opt- scenes? yes oh my god i got i got emotional at the end of the um what was the pixar movie where the kid was like the wizard oh um onward yes oh yeah. yes yeah. with tom holland and chris pratt yeah what i got it? emotional at the end when chris pratt's character well, have you guys seen it? I yeah, yeah, Howard, yeah, 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 yeah. I liked got, it. I, it's when he not... got to when he got to meet his dad again, I was like, "That was I sweet." That for him, that was yeah. sweet. It, no, onward that is good. The... It's just not in the same tier as those other ones yeah. to me. I will say though, the gag, the gag of the van turning into like a magical horse, and like oh, the, yes. it, it, it gallops because <laughs> of the messed up tire, and Chris Pratt's like, yeah. "Ride, you majestic steed!" <laughs> like that is one of the That's funniest good. things they've that ever is done. Really good. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, we'll go back to the draft. Trent, you are on the clock and you get to make your final two picks here. I know, I know. There's pressure now here. <laughs> let, me, let me console my little uh, my board here. Got to make sure that we're building up this roster for the future. There's here. some I I've got to be real like 
I put more on my board than we're going to pick. And I'm like, oh, there's, I could actually, I'd be happy with a lot of these things that are left. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think I got to go with uh, one that I have not seen most of the entries in this franchise, but the latest entry is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Um, I'm going to go with Furiosa, which is Ooh, a prequel right. to Mad Max Fury Road, um, which is quite possibly the most ambitious, bonkers, in- insane cinema experience I've ever had in my life. Like It's weird. Wow. I it, have not it, seen Mad Max Fury Road, it, so that's, like, that's it, a blind it's, spot It's one me. of those movies that you watch and you're like, how how did they make this? It's one of the few movies yeah. for me where like movie magic still exists. Where I'm okay. like, I don't know how they ever finished this movie and that not everyone like died who was involved. <laughs> like Josh, I think you would I think you would like it a lot. Yeah. I it feels like the kind of movie I would like. So I it's on my watch list <laughs> of like the the hundreds of movies that I've missed over the years. So like I might I might have to bump it up a little bit. Yeah. Um Chris Hemsworth is seems yeah. to be making some really some bold acting choices in the trailer mm-hmm. for this. Um Anya Taylor Joy obviously is like a, a young on the rise presence, um, and and yeah, I just don't think anybody's choreographing action quite like George Miller. Obviously, we have like the John Wick stuff and the Marvel yeah. stuff, but George Miller sort of his brain operates on different different levels. Like it's purely on a diesel here. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, some of those go. scenes from like Fury Road were like like Joseph when they're like, on like the poles and everything's like swinging back and forth. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, yeah, it was wild. And like this weirdo is playing like a fire outputting electric guitar. What? Okay, yeah. that's awesome. Are you on, kidding on me? On top of like a on top of like a fifty foot tall monster truck. All right. Yeah, I gotta see this. That yes, sounds. I, I, that sounds I think, wild. Like I don't know if you like love the movie as a as like a narrative thing, Josh. But like I think <laughs> just as an experience, it would be like this is one of the boldest like yeah. pieces of things I've ever my eyeballs yeah. have ever witnessed. <laughs> Because the narrative is like, it's pretty bare bones, but you're watching it just for the fun of the movie. Like, yeah. it is not spoiling the narrative to say that the movie is one long car chase. Yes, yeah, okay, I did know much. that much, and that sounds fascinating to me. But there's the way that they are How long to, is it? It's two hours flat, wow. so, I think. Oh my gosh, okay. But the yeah, way that not, they are... It's not like the Tuk Tuk chase from Dial of Destiny. No. <laughs> okay. That's, like the that's, way that they are able to have nonstop action, but still have pretty complex character arcs for like three or four of the main characters is just like mm-hmm. an astounding feat of storytelling through action and characterization. Yeah. I, I think it's just really one of the most impressive things. Nicholas Holt's of like, character Nicholas Holt's is, great. He's okay. like insane in that movie. Yes. All right. I you, you you guys are selling me on this. Did it win Best Picture? It it was nominated. It was nominated. For it. It, won, it probably it probably won like sound and production design. Yeah. It won six Oscars. So, okay. It won it won editing. I remember it being a costume huge award success when it came out. So I, it's 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 always been on my radar. I just yeah, I, I'll watch it. I'll I'll watch it. We all we are getting a lot of homework from this episode. Yes, um, everybody <laughs> everybody's adding things. Uh, all right, Trent. Last pick. What you got? I think I might just have to go with like. I like I know this is not on your guys' draft board, but like it makes me so happy. Okay, so I just gotta go. With, I, I gotta go with Venom three for for the final one. <laughs> yes, like this hey, just became. It was on my. It actually was on my board, Trent. I'll oh, that's know. incredible. Um, I guys, I like legit love the Venom franchise, like unironically, <laughs> because we all saw that trailer with the unfinished visual effects back in, like, 2017 or whatever. Yep. And we were like, this movie looks terrible. And then, like, I went to go see it in the theater. And, I, and like, the movie itself is like, hey, guess what? We are kind of terrible, but we <laughs> but we know that, like, what we are. Right. And we're just gonna, like, show you a good time. Yeah. And yeah. Tom Hardy's gonna go in a lobster tank and eat lobsters. That's um, so weird. And and then like the second one's even weirder where like it's basically the story of like Venom and Eddie's like couples therapy. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know. It's just like I love that a studio just gave like a, a moderately sized budget for like Tom Hardy and friends just to like go wild. Um yeah. well, and then like the second one was like their couples therapy when Venom has a problem child. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that he doesn't want to deal with like he's like nope we're not dealing with carnage yep like go run away um 
no, it's it's so much fun. Tom Hardy clearly has like a blast playing this character. I think he even is going to get a screenplay credit for this third one. Um, oh, good for him. So, so yeah, I, I would be lying if I didn't say in my heart of hearts that this is actually one of my like anticipated <laughs> films it's from this year. Higher on the list, but you know, I've got because a, of draft strategy, it was last. I've yeah. got a game for you, Trent. When you when you watch it, just to see how you handle it. Uh, take a shot every time Tom Hardy looks confused. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, be like <laughs> dead, dead by the end of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I there's also the possibility of uh, uh, a certain Tom Holland Spider Man being in this movie. Yes, I've heard the rumors. Yeah. So I to me that would be fun. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not let a crossover? If I mean, for no like, other reason than like just a scene of Tom Holland reacting to yes. like Eddie and Venom's dynamic and being yes. like. Like, you are going through something, aren't you? Because <laughs> he could be like, oh, wait, Peter One told me about a black goo alien. Is that you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, are, that's right. Are, are you the black goo? <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. We're writing the movie right here. Okay, Joseph, you have your final pick. Man, I'm kind of down to the last... I'm down to the last two things on my draft board, actually. I didn't have an extensive one. And I'm not sure which one to pick. I think I'm going to have to go rule of cool on this one and pick the one that I think is going to look cooler and take the last airbender. Ooh, yeah. I was uh, about to say, how are you not picking this? I, you couldn't well, let I that had, go. I, I did have, since we're down to the last pick. So when you come around, it's not going to affect it. I was down to last airbender and penguin. Oh, okay. Peng- penguin was also on my honorable yeah. mentions. Yeah. yeah so, we'll, we'll talk so about it. I'll, I'll go with, uh, with the last airbender. I just, I want them to nail Zuko. I just yeah. I want no I want Zuko to be done right. Yeah. I don't really care about I care about Iroh, but like if they are if the rest of the characters are like, eh, they're okay, as long as they get Zuko and Iroh right, we're good. If Firebending it's, looks cool. Yeah. It's still on my agenda to watch the animated series before this comes out. I I'm not that far, but we will we will get as close as we can anyway. I, so and good. I assume this show's only going to cover like the first season of the animated show. Would that be? Safe yeah, to probably. Assume? That that's fair to assume. And and Josh, when you get to when you get to the final part of uh, the final arc of season one, you'll run into a familiar name in the credits, Mister uh, Dave Filoni. Dave Filoni, yeah, directed yeah. Like, the final batch of season one. That's so cool because he oh, worked at Nickelodeon right before George <laughs> Lucas phoned him up. That's right. That's like, right. Hey, Mr. Filoni, would you like to come work for me making Star Wars? He's like, uh, let me just put in my notice to Nickelodeon right now. <laughs> well, the, the 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 funniest thing is that the story I read, like Filoni thought it was a prank because he's like, oh, the people at Nickelodeon so know funny. how much I love Star Wars. There's no way George Lucas like called me. And then George Lucas mm-hmm. had to call him back and be like, hey, this is actually George Lucas. Like, That's great. That's hilarious. I mean, I'm not going to lie. That's a pretty fair thing to do. Like, no, yeah. If like, when does George Lucas call you? Come on. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I think this is like another one of the biggest events of the year, right? I mean, like this is the one of one of the most beloved animated projects ever, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I, do you guys are you guys nervous? I'm not nervous in that it's like going to be bad because I think the Shyamalan film, I, you know, I don't like to tear anybody down, but I think that gave such a blueprint of like what not to do that it would be hard to make a similar... My, my question is, like, if it's just going to be the exact story of the cartoon retold, like, why does it exist? Yeah. That, that's the, Like, I, like I kind of hope that they change some stuff just to make it its own thing enough that, yeah. like, it, it I, stands on its own merits besides just copying it. The, the original creators are involved. I want it to be more Jungle Book than Lion King. Yes. Yep. That's a, yeah. that's a great because Jungle Book is a good comparison. Yeah. Jungle Book like followed the story, but like did some different things. The Lion King was like a shot for shot remake. Yeah, where if they do a shot for shot remake of uh, later in the series, Trent the Agni Kai, if they yeah. did a shot for shot of that, that's fine. That would be that would be amazing. That that that's but totally fine. I, yeah, I kind of I hope they add something to it. When I, I will say I rewatched the animated series like two years ago mm-hmm. and I I rewatching it. I was like, season one's actually not as strong as I remember. Mm. 
for most of it until the end, like the final five, six episodes. Yeah. So I'm like, there, there's actually like ways to, I think, do season one better. So that, that does make oh, me yeah. awesome. And I think okay. they'll streamline it because Trent, isn't a lot of season one like we're going to fly around because Zuko's chasing us? Yes, there's a lot of like, yeah, we can't do anything. Just making sure we stay alive portion of the first season. Um, and there's only like two conventional like quest arcs, I think, mm. in that first season. Yeah, because it's season one when they go to the the Southern Water Tribe. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I can confirm this for you soon when I when I watch all of it for the first time. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, all right, that takes me to the final pick of this draft. Uh, I I will be making the last selection, and you know what? I this is a this is a total like shot in the dark for me. Because I'm picking something that I really have no familiarity with. Mm -hmm. But I watched the trailer and the trailer looked really cool. I am going to pick the Fallout series coming to Amazon Prime later this Ooh, year. Ooh, yeah. I have not played the video game and or the iteration of games that have come out. Uh, but this is kind of... I'm trying to recreate the magic of picking The Last of Us late in our draft last year. And there hopefully, you go. This, hopefully this works too. I don't know. This... I. I, I haven't played the games. People love the Fallout games. And it seems to me like they're making a fresh story. This isn't like The Last of Us where they they essentially recreate, like did the same, told the same story that The mm -hmm. Last of Us the game told. It seems like they're adding a new story into the world of the Fallout series of video games. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. The production value on this looks really strong. And I really like the concept. Um, you know, a good like... Uh, uh, what if you know like everything that we learned in the Oppenheimer movie went wrong and we'll see what civilization looks like after that um yeah i don't know this looks like uh a it, it might not it might not be any good at all but uh it's something new and and fresh and like it would be interesting for me to see has the industry figured out the video game problem of like taking a video game and trying to make it into uh, an on-screen adaptation? They did it right with The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. uh, can they do it with Fallout? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, because uh, Halo Season 2 comes out this year and it looks like they doubled down on what people criticized yeah. in Season 1. Not going to lie, part but of me like loves when people do that. Yeah, like they're just, just like just they're just like like yeah. we're, like well, not even despite the fans, but it's just like we're we're committed to the ride, like whether people are on board or not. Yeah, yeah I think what they did though was like sometimes you can double down on it and it works out if it's good. A lot of the criticisms of season one were valid, yeah. and they're like, oh, you don't like Master Chief taking off his helmet? Uh, why don't we just take off all of his armor and just? <laughs> almost separate him from the armor it's like no you you don't understand <laughs> interesting he is, he is supposed to be quiet and look cool yeah yeah so yeah we'll see we'll see um all right but that's gonna do our draft to recap my roster of uh of picks for 2024 is dune part two star wars the acolyte joker folia de and fallout Joseph, your roster is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, War Lord of the Rings, War of the Rohirrim, Inside Out 2, and Avatar The Last Airbender. And then Trent, your roster looks like Deadpool 3, Echo, Furiosa, and Venom 3. Uh, that's what we got, guys. Feeling like, feeling like we covered a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what are, what's missing? Any honorable mentions we want to shout out? Yeah, I'll do I'll do a couple real real fast here. Uh, the Penguin series on yes. Max this year, I'm actually really looking forward to. I thought Colin Farrell's portrayal of the Penguin in the Batman was like genuinely incredible as a yeah. supporting performance. Like him yeah. just being like an Al Capone gangster, correcting people's Spanish grammar, um, is great. <laughs> um, Sonic the Hedgehog three is a franchise I've actually really enjoyed quite a bit. Forgot um, about that. Yeah. Um, Bad Batch yeah, season three. Bad Batch season three. Yes. Yes. Um, Tales of the Jedi season two. I'd be Ooh. lying if I said I wasn't going to watch at some point Godzilla and Kong: The New Empire. <laughs> yeah, that's just right. seeing just seeing those two that's dudes right. become best bros and running in like the whatever Hollow Earth they're calling it or whatever. Kong like, has like an Iron Man glove. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be nuts. 
Joseph, how about you? Any anything you want to shout out? Yeah, I'd mention it a little bit. Bad Batch season three. I think where they left off season two, they were in a good spot to set up season three to be more good. Yeah. <laughs> not like the not like the first part of season two where me and Trent were kind of like, eh, I don't know about this one. But they they saved it. They pulled it back. They, oh, they they definitely pulled it back at the end of that <laughs> season. That was the end of that season was really good. Uh, Tales of the Jedi season two, whatever it's going to be. I think just having some random Jedi adventures would be fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to see Ahsoka in it. No, Um, let's move on. Don't really want to see Count Dooku in it again either, even though I thought his episodes were the strongest part of season one. Um, Yeah. Just want to see like a Jedi that we haven't had a lot of time with. Give me a Plo Koon, a Ki-Adi Mundi. Um, Yaddle. I would do yeah, I'll get down really with the Yaddle fun. episode yeah. or two. She was great in the, the episode she was in. Um, or let's go else? like let's go like post prequel era. Let's see. Let's get some like give me a Ray, give me a Ray episode. A, give me a Luke in the Jedi Temple episode. Give me a Quinlan Voss on the run from the Empire episode. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Why not? Um, you could do a High Republic episode. You could. Do um, uh, think, what's his name? What's his name from uh, Fallen Order? Oh, uh, Cal, 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 Kestis? Cal Kestis. Yeah, yeah. They could do Cal Kestis. They could do his master uh, Jara Tapal. Mm-hmm. They could do Terran Malikos, who was a High Republic Jedi that fell. Um, Ooh, and was in uh, Jedi Survivor. Um, Agatha comes out this year. Yeah. I didn't really care for WandaVision that much, so I'm not real excited, but I guess that's a Marvel show that comes out. I actually um, am excited for that one. Just real quick. I think I think that one has some potential. Just because it's a creative, like it's a creative choice yeah. to go back. WandaVision had some really good acting in it. Catherine yeah. Hahn's amazing, so we'll, yeah. we'll see. Well, we and there's to, no um, expectations for it, right? Like I, no. nobody has any idea what the story of that is or how it's going to connect to the broader thing, so they can kind of just do whatever. So. And we're getting we're getting Aubrey Plaza, guys. Like she's yeah. she's entering the fold <laughs> in the MCU. That's really fun. Yeah. Yep. We're getting uh, the official kickoff of the DCU this year with Creature yep. Commandos. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't know what that is, other than that it's a cartoon with Rick Flag's dad. <laughs> Rick Flag's dad. Frankenstein's monsters involved somehow. That's I didn't crazy. know that. That's um, crazy. We will potentially get uh, some new Star Trek content this year. Uh, Discovery season five is coming out at some point. Uh, Lower Deck season five might come out this year. Uh, I'm not holding out for Strange New World season three because of the writers and actors strike, but that could maybe sneak in at the end of the year. And if that sneaks in at the end of the year, that would have been my top pick after you took Strange New Worlds. Mm. Um, or after you took Dune. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, there's I'll also some, sorry, yeah, there's some weird there's some weird stuff of like, is it gonna come out at the end of this year yeah. or sometime next year? I was also gonna shout out uh Eyes of Wakanda animated yes. series that yeah. Marvel's putting out. I really feel out of all the animated shows, that one to me is the most exciting because Ryan Coogler's behind it. And like mm-hmm. we've always I feel like we've always said, like, give us more Wakanda, like uh, other than the Black yeah. Panther movies, like there's a whole world here to explore with the Dora Milaje and everything like seems like they're going to do that in this show. So that that could be really cool. X-Men yeah. 97. Yeah, I know. I was sort of surprised yeah. you didn't take that. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, but yeah. I guess we'll, we'll see. I mean, it. it we're we'll get we're gonna get a lot more X Men content in the in the coming years. So this is really just the beginning. Yeah, yeah. We we all need to just start watching X Men ninety two to catch up. I've I've yeah. seen a, a chunk. I watched it in pieces when I was a kid. So I've seen some. Yeah. Um. All right, we're gonna we're gonna end today's episode with a little bit of a review. Uh, five. You know, give give our five minute review on. Something that came out over the holiday break. That is What If Season 2. I have not seen this. Trey and Joseph, I think y'all have seen most of it, right? Or have you seen I, all of it? I've seen we, all of it. I finished it, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm going to pass it over to y'all. Like, Give me your five-minute thoughts on, on What If Season 2. Yeah, so I liked What If Season 1. Um, 
I really like the animation style that they do for both seasons of this. Like, it's not it's not the Disney look. It's not the Pixar thing. It's not Spider-Verse. It feels like a comic book in animated form um, yep. in the best way. Um, the, the I thought the voice acting was stronger this season than it was in the first season. If you if people remember, there was sort of a mm-hmm. controversy about how a lot of people sounded or some people sounded in season one. Um, and I had a lot of fun with a lot of episodes. I mean, y'all, Justin Hammer is back. So <laughs> I, obviously, a part of me is like, this is the best thing Marvel's ever created because because <laughs> Justin Hammer did a Die Hard homage. That's um, really cool. Overall, though, um, Joseph, you and I texted about this. I I'm not a huge fan of how they're treating the word multiverse in this series, where instead of being like, hey, we're animated, we're lower budget, we can really get crazy, they're like, let's do like this movie, but with one difference, but it's the same story again, or these two movies mashed up into one thing. Mm. And I'm like, that I guess that's cool and it's fun and it's watchable, but it's just it it's so limiting to what I think like this concept could be that I that I was overall kind of meh on on season two i I really liked the the uh peter quill versus the avengers episode really liked the 1607 avengers or 16 whatever year that was um obviously my boy justin hammer and then the other ones i was just sort of either like oh that was an intriguing thing or that character was really cool but the plot didn't didn't really work for me that well yeah i'm on the same kind of on the same thing as trent with kind of one difference I did not like the Justin Hammer episode very much. Sure. Um, But the, I think the most interesting episode of the season, and it was my favorite episode of the season was the Kahori one. Yeah, that was, that was, I've heard heard that one was good where it was um, totally in a different language Mm -hmm. and was just this like nuts, no, uh, not nuts, but like just off the wall, random, brand new character thing. I thought it was really interesting. Um, yeah, the sixteen oh two Avengers was fine. I liked the Hella episode. Yes, they. I thought they, that one was really entertaining and was. <laughs> it was like a mashup of Thor, and it was like the mashup of the first Thor and Shang Chi. Right, and they sort of they they hinted at this with Hela's character in Ragnarok that like there is this tragic element of I was just I became what my father groomed me to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And and this episode of What If kind of explores that to like what's that yeah. natural endpoint? And I thought that was really fascinating. I think from a character standpoint, that was my favorite one. Yeah, that um, one. From, that one in the the Kahori episode were my favorites, and then the the Peter Quill one. Yeah. Um. And just watching the Hello one, I'm like, dang, Odin is really trying to beat out Thanos for worst dad in the MCU. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> it's a tight was, competition. He was awful. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, overall, like Trent said, kind of meh. It, I think they're wasting the concept. That's what's that's what frustrates me is because I've I've listened and seen a, a little bit in terms of reviews of it, and it's such a cool concept, like. The thing that bothers me is that they're not, it's the scenarios they're picking. Like when I looked at the episode list, I'm like, who wants to watch this? Like, honestly, like I, uh, other than for the, to see how this project was made and the creativity and the animation, like, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think there there could have been there. You could have picked things that people actually ask questions about in the Marvel universe. Like, like what if, what if, uh, Peter Quill actually did kill Kamora. You know what I mean? Like what, what if stuff like that, like that's the kind of stuff I I wish they talked about. I think I would have liked the Justin Hammer episode much more if they had kept happy the same. Yes. That I don't love that choice. They, they turn happy into like a, like a purple Hulk. That's weird. And and it makes sense because it's based in the comics, but yeah if it and was it, him like crawling around the like the air, the air ducts and trying to figure out ways to lock hammer out of the tower i think it would have been better but he's like oh no i'm a hulk now yeah so. i just it, it feels like there's missed opportunities here i'll probably sit down and watch the episodes at some point but i'm not it's in not a like a bad time or anything. no yeah, I, I, yeah. Did, I didn't finish any episode and be like 
oh that would that like that was not a good use of 20 minutes i was like yeah. oh that was that was enjoyable but yeah. it's just like it's just the concept yeah it's just mm-hmm. i don't think it's living up to its full potential right now yeah and i think too they're trying to like make it be all these disconnected tales but then they're like oh yeah we're gonna gather everybody up at the end of the season for a big adventure of just the people you've seen episodes of yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's so weird yeah well I think that's going to do it for our episode today. Good, I think uh, so. Yep. Good little cap on what if season two, and we got we got lots to talk about in twenty twenty four. So even though it's not as packed of a year, like we're gonna we're gonna have fun on this podcast, y'all. We're gonna do some we're gonna do some different stuff, more drafts, uh, more Hall of Fames this year. You definitely definitely will be diving in. There's a lot of cool anniversaries this year of big there's, movies there's a lot. that mean a lot to this genre. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of fun, exciting content. As always, thanks for listening. And you can follow us on social media at The Stinger at the Stinger Pod on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And we will be back 